What up everyone, my name is Yusuf, you know me as the movie lover today, today, today. Uh, we're going to be reviewing The Call of the Wild. Uh, this is the newest film from 20th Century Studios. Uh, it's directed by Chris Sanders and stars Harrison Ford and a dog. Um, and it's based on the classic novel by Jack London. Uh, I saw this movie last Thursday. Um, and for, before I, I get started with the review, it was <laughs> it was a very, very weird experience because it was a very disney screening for a well 20th century now but a fox movie um the disney reps were there it was a disney screening pass they had the same security that take your phones for disney screenings so it was all it was all very disney and it was all very weird because <laughs> this is a fox film uh, and even when the movie started um they have the 20th century studios logo which I really do not like. Um, I miss the old Fox logo and the Fox name. But the fanfare is still there. Everything is the same. It just says Studios instead of Fox. I don't. It's it, it's just really weird. I'll get used to it. But I, yeah. Anyway, um, with the film, I didn't have very high expectations of it. I'm gonna be honest because I thought, oh, another Harrison Ford movie, another dog movie. I've seen these before. Like, I'm not that interested in it. But I was actually again very pleasantly surprised, just like Sonic. Maybe it's just because it's been such a slow movie season that I like want to like the movies, but this movie really surprised me um, because it's it's such a beautiful film. And that's where I want to start. I think this not just like with the cinematography, which is what we're gonna talk about, but the story. Um, but with the cinematography, I think the film is just beautiful. It was so it was beautifully shot. It was beautiful. Like every like when you're looking at it, it just looks like a bunch of pictures, and it's so pretty to look at like everybody was ooing and awing and everything um and i haven't been to the yukon um but i was up uh in barkerville which ha like this film reminded me a lot of um it, with the sets and the costumes and everything i was up there working on a film um which i'll leave the link to the trailer with the little eye thing in whichever corner um but it reminded me very much of that, so that was very nice because that was a great experience and being able to go back there. And it, again, it was just beautiful, the scenery, all the trees, nature, the snow, the water. It was all very, very beautiful to watch. Just like the posters. I think the posters are so nice. They're so, again, beautiful because I'm so sick of all of the blockbuster posters with their circles and their faces. This one's just... Harrison Ford and his dog, so I like that, and I think the film is just as beautiful as those posters. It's really, really nice, um, and if you know you're bored by everything else, then at least you got some beautiful things to look at. Um, next, I want to talk about actually the dog um, and the VFX on the dog. Um, the dog is very cute. He's a very, 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 very cute dog. I remember watching the trailers and I was like, "Ugh, the VFX looks so bad," and I think. They look okay. Um, I warmed up to it as the film went on because the dog does look very realistic, but I think where they differed from, let's say, The Lion King is that they actually gave this dog emotion. He emotes throughout the movie, which I think was good, and you needed that. Like It added a lot. The dog is very cute. You root for Buck. You love Buck. And all the dogs in the movie. I love every single dog in the movie, even that stupid husky um, with you know the sled squad. Um, I think all the dogs were really, really cute. I'm a dog person. I don't like cats. But the the dog was very, 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 very uh, adorable. Uh, and speaking of that, you know, this is directed by Chris Sanders. He did Lilo and Stitch. He did How to Train Your Dragon. And Buck reminded me a lot of um, Stitch and Toothless. Like, the, Buck is very, very, very toothless. Um, he acts a lot like Toothless. It reminded me a lot of that. Uh, especially his relationship with Harrison Ford, it was a lot of toothless and hiccup. Um, they not to spoil too much, but they inf they have like a a wolf in this movie, a lady wolf. Ooh, and it reminded me a lot of um, the um, relationship between Toothless and his lady dragon friend. Uh, like <laughs> it reminds you so much of that. And again, I don't want to spoil too much, but the ending of the movie is like exactly the same as the ending of How to Train Your Dragon Three. Um, but yeah, the dog is very cute. You root for the dog. It's great. The VFX don't really, like, take you out of the movie that much. Again, the dog just gets to emote. There is one shot in the movie, and you'll know when you see it. It's towards the end. Um, it doesn't have to do anything with the characters. It's more of a, a VFX shot with a building. 
that looks so bad. That's the one part that took me out of the movie. But other than that, I think the VFX throughout the movie are pretty good. Um, next, I want to talk. Let's talk about the cast. Uh, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford was great here. I thought it was just going to be another, you know, I'm Harrison Ford. But it wasn't. Harrison Ford actually emoted in this movie. I can't believe I saw Harrison Ford emote. I haven't seen him emote and act in such a long time. So it was a pleasant surprise. Uh, he was very, very good in this movie. His relationship with Buck was very, very good. Uh, his relationship with other humans are good. His story is kind of like, you know, we've seen it before. I don't want to spoil it too much. But, you know, we've seen that kind of character before. Um, but I think, you know, I like Harrison Ford. I liked him in this movie, so I thought it was, uh, good. Uh, Karen Gillan and Bradley Whitford. I was so excited that they were in this movie. I saw their name on the press pass. I was like, yes, because I love both. I love Karen Gillan, but I really love Bradley Whitford. I think he's great. Um, their roles are very, very, very small, but they are very good in those roles. That You know, they're dressed up in these big, elaborate, you know, old-timey costumes and makeup and Bradley Whitford has a sick mustache um but they do the most with the screen time that they're given so I really like their characters uh, the one character I didn't like was Dan Stevens Dan Stevens plays the villain of the movie he comes like towards the end of the film and he just comes out of nowhere and he's like really 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 you know terrible in this film like his character is terrible but his performance didn't really add anything to it. It was just, he was just kind of like, oh, I'm evil. I hate dogs. I beat him with a club, and I'm like, eh, like, you know, add layers to your performance, Dan Stevens. It it wasn't good. His character, his character was crazy. He was like, whoa, um, yeah, I, I didn't like um, that character that much. Um, and also, I really liked uh, Omar Sy and Kara Gee. Um, as the mail delivery people with the sled dogs. Both of their characters were great. I wished um, we would have seen more of them. Um, but that brings me to my last point, and I think the one negative of this film is it feels more like a Disney Plus show than it does a movie. And not the scope of the film, it's very cinematic. Um, but the film is, it feels like, like three different films all condensed into one because there's so much that happens in this film. You follow Buck throughout his life. Um, you know, like I, I would have liked to explore him and the judge more. I would have liked to explore him with the sled. The sled part was my favorite. I think the, the parts when they were sledding along was great. It was so riveting. It was really, really fun. You know, the music was great. The locations were great. The editing was great. I really loved those sequences and I wish we would have seen more of them. Um, and then obviously the part with Harrison Ford, I think. If this was maybe like a six episode or eight episode Disney Plus show, we would have been able to explore more of those and it would have felt more cohesive than it does here. You know, everything feels a little bit rushed because they want to move on to Harrison Ford, um, who gets the most screen time. But I think his section with Buck was kind of the least, I wouldn't say the least interesting, but it was less interesting than the sledding. The sledding was so fun. It was so much fun. I would have liked to, I would have seen two hours of just Buck's, you know, on a sled it was really really fun um that not to say that harrison ford's parts weren't fun you know he's on a boat a lot and everything with the little with the river rapids was really fun but i would have liked to see more sledding personally um so overall i give this film uh an 8.5 out of 10 that's an 85 percent. that's an a b uh should you see the call of the wild i think so i think it's a really fun movie i think you know if you like dogs it's great uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say bring tissues, but there is a lot of um, uh, dog abuse in this movie um, and a lot of cute little puppers. So, um, I don't know. It, judge for yourself. But I, th I think the film is very, very strong. Chris Sanders, I'm a huge fan of. I love Stitch. I love um, How to Train a Dragon 3 was meh. But I really like his the characters that he builds, and I really wish that we would have explored more of Buck's adventures, kind of. Uh, I don't think we will because this movie cost what, like a hundred and ten million to make, and I don't think it's gonna make that much. But you know, maybe I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing. Tell me what you think of the Call of the Wild down below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you excited to see it? Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye.